in my home, one of my favorite things is this map that I have of the world. Now on that map, do you see the pins that I have? I have those pins on there to show places that I've been. Miss Joy loves to travel and I've been very blessed to be able to go to some special places. And today is extra special because we are celebrating World Communion Sunday. Today, people all around the world are taking the bread and the juice together as one big family of Christians all around the world to remember how much Jesus loves us and wants us to be part of his table. So here is a story that I want to share with you about what the Lord's Supper is all about. Sometimes we call it the Lord's Supper. Sometimes we call it communion. You may even hear in some churches it's called the Eucharist. But it reminds us of that last meal that Jesus had with us. So this story is written by one of my teachers in college. Her name is Dr. Patty Myers. So let's read this together. Where do you eat meals with your family? Do you have a kitchen table or breakfast bar? Do you put your food on TV trays? Do you have a dining room table where everyone gathers at least once a day or at least eat together on special occasions? The table where we eat is one of the most intimate places in our lives. It's a place where we share food, drink, and stories. We pass a dish and we say, hey, try this, or let me get you something to drink. We talk about life's happenings and support each other. When we invite friends to eat with us, we invite them to become part of our lives. We want them to receive nurture from the same food and drink that nurtures us. Refusing hospitality is offensive. People feel personally rejected when we don't accept an invitation to their table. It seems strange, but in a way, the table is where we can become food for one another. No, I don't mean to chew on someone's arm. I mean that it's at the table that we often give part of ourselves to each other. We do that just by coming together to share. When we tell stories and listen to one another as we eat, we give each other necessary nourishment for life. We all want to be accepted and loved and need it in order to be happy. That's a silly picture. See how he's biting his arm? That's not what we're talking about. The table is where we eat food together. Everyone needs to eat and drink to stay alive. Having a meal together is more than survival. It is celebrating the gifts of life and love. More happens at the table than just feeding our bodies. Our souls get fed too. Having a meal together makes friends seem like family and makes strangers feel like friends. Smiling faces encourage us and hugs make us feel welcome. When we fill each other's cup, pass the bread, and when we serve each other, we're part of each other's lives. Do you eat meals with people that you love? Maybe you eat with your parents, sisters, brothers, or grandparents. Perhaps neighbors, aunts, uncles, and cousins join you at special times such as Easter and Christmas, Thanksgiving, or to celebrate birthdays. Maybe the people in your neighborhood get together for picnics or your church has potluck suppers. Does your family have special traditions for special meals? My family does. We hold hands and we say a prayer that God will bless our meal before we eat. Everyone shares with everybody else. When I was growing up after dinner, my dad would always read from his Bible and say a prayer for every member of the family before we were excused from the table. Even if my brother took forever to eat his vegetables, we had to wait for him. When I was a little girl, one of my chores was to set the table for family meals. By age four, I could put the silverware dishes and napkins in their proper places on the table after mom put the tablecloth on it. In that way, I helped get things ready for my family to come and eat. The salad fork, 
the fork you used first goes on the far left, and then your second fork goes between the salad fork and the plate. The knife goes on the right side next to the plate on the other side with its blade facing the plate with a teaspoon on its other side and maybe a soup spoon next to that if you had soup first. The water glass goes in front of the tip of the knife and the cup next to the glass above the spoons. A nicely folded napkin is placed either on the plate or next to the forks. For special meals, we added a centerpiece, usually flowers from our garden and candles. When I set the Lord's table, I do so with equal attention to the details so that all of God's family will feel welcome at this special place. There are two candles on the Lord's table, one to remind us that Jesus was God's son and the other to remind us that he was a human being just like you and me. There's usually a tablecloth called a pyramid and a centerpiece, which may be several different things, flowers, pictures, artwork, and so forth, to help us think of Jesus. And we do have that at our church the same way. The dishes on the Lord's table have special names too. The plate that holds the bread is called a paten, and the goblet that holds the grape juice is called a chalice. The napkins go on top of the chalice and paten, maybe to help keep people from snacking before mealtime. Jesus ate with his friends and family members. They had lively discussions, they told jokes, and Jesus taught them about God's love as they ate together. The Bible tells lots of stories about Jesus eating with people, but there's only one story in which Jesus is the host of the meal. It's from that story we learn about the Lord's table. At the table in the front of worship places today, Jesus is the host. All who love him gather for special meals of grape juice and bread with him. You are welcome here because Jesus loves you and you love Jesus as I do. It's called the Lord's table and what we eat and drink here is called the Lord's supper in honor of him. Sometimes it's called Holy Communion because it's where Jesus' companions come together for a meal with him. Another name for the Lord's Supper is Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. They all mean the same thing, gathering at the Lord's table to remember that we are part of Jesus' family and to receive strength to live out our daily lives. Like my family's dining room table, the Lord's Table is simple, beautiful, and inviting. That's good. Jesus invites to his table those who are in loving relationships with God and others, yes, even your brother or sister or the bully who lives down the street and hasn't yet learned how to be nice. It doesn't matter what color you have, what color skin you have, or what shape your eyes have. It doesn't matter if you're small or tall or if you have big feet or little feet. It doesn't matter whether, whether you understand what goes on here. It's a mystery. And that's okay. We don't have to know everything. We just have to show our love for Jesus by being kind to others and remembering that Jesus loves each of us. So whenever your church family and guests gather for this special meal with Jesus, come to the table. You are welcome here. No one should stop you because this is Jesus' table and he invites you. You are welcome here. So we have um, a special communion today at five o'clock with Pastor Dan on YouTube Live and I hope that you will take your bread and your juice at home and that you'll be part of this special meal with us together on this Holy Communion Sunday. Jesus loves you and we love you.